So my my sense Brenna for agreeing to talk about mixed voice and your experience with mixed voice. And I just want to introduce you as um, a student who has worked with me for some time. Um, you've taken music theatre exa exams and have always consistently done very, very well at those. But also I think together we're really, really proud and pleased of your work at um, in your Bachelor of Arts um, music performance uh, a degree in which you got a very rare 100% for your work. So Rena, let's get started and let's um, talk about mixed voice. Yeah. So first of all, can you tell me what your understanding of the term mixed voice is? Yeah, so I guess it's similar to what its name would suggest in that it's a mix between your head voice and your chest voice. And so you would use mixed voice, I guess, in trying to blend the transition between your passagios or blend the transition between your chest and your head voice. So it's not a sort of obvious uh, voice crack or gear change. Um, and you would also, I guess, use mixed voice if you've got some higher notes in a song and you want to maybe not sing them too much with a head voice quality. You want to kind of blend a bit more chest voice to give it a bit more depth. So that's where you can use mixed voice. It's really blending the two together to get the desired sort of tone that you want for those notes. So it's got, I guess, maybe two functions, I would say. Great. Um, uh, Rena, can you tell us why you think it's an important component of singing? Yeah, so it's very important in sort of, first of all, again, smoothing out that transition. Uh, you really want to make sure that there's a seamless um, shift between your chest voice and your head voice. So it really helps if you're working on mixed voice getting that and having a really strong middle register even. And as such, it gives you a lot of vocal agility. So you're able to switch between notes a whole lot easier if you've developed strong mixed voice. And I think it's also important because it gives you a whole sort of toolbox of uh, tone colors that you can play around with. So as I was saying before, if you've got a higher note, but you don't want to really sing it with that head voice, light, maybe classical quality, you can incorporate some mixed voice where you blend a bit more chest um, and you don't want to denote, sorry, to sound too chesty and too heavy and scrapey if you're or strainy if you're um, bringing your chest voice up too high. So you can use some mixed voice to give it that sort of strong chest voice quality without the strain and sort of maybe with the lightness of the head voice. Yes, I think it, um, you know, it's a really versatile way of using your voice, particularly for women. Do you find that, Rena? Yeah, it definitely gives me a lot of versatility across a range of repertoire because you'll find as you progress in your singing career, um, you need a lot of versatility to switch between genres and your mixed voice will really help with that. Or having a strong mix will help with that. When you're working, um, when you're practising, Rena, um, what can you tell us the sorts of things that you might um really focus on to develop your mixed voice and really observe what's going on. Some of the technical moves, but also some of the sound qualities that you might be looking for and anything else that you might have discovered as you're working on your mixed voice. Yeah, so uh, one exercise I like to do to practice and work on strengthening my mixed voice is uh, arpeggios because that will really force you to move between um, your chest voice and your head voice quite quickly and it will force you to work on mixing because generally what will happen is you'll sing the lower note in your chest voice um, the middle two notes you'll start to blend and then you'll get to your head voice, which uh, the top note, which will generally sing in your head voice. And so it forces you to work on your mixed voice in that you're trying to make it a smooth transition in terms of the tone that if someone was listening, it doesn't sound like the tone has changed. Um, as you get higher with the arpeggios, you're going to be mixing a lot more because um, there will be times where you'll no longer be singing in your chest voice if you've gotten quite high, especially for a female. Um, you won't be singing those lower notes in your chest voice anymore. You'll be using a lot more mix. 
Um, so what I'm looking, you can do those arpeggios on a phrase or a tongue twister, or you can just do them on a vowel. And it's very important that you're practicing with different vowel shapes because that's going to feel different when you're singing. And there's obviously going to be some that are a bit easier for you to sing and some that are a bit harder and that's going to affect the quality of the sound. So what I'm looking for when I'm just doing, you know, a focused uh, practice on mixed voice through an arpeggio, for instance, First of all, I'm looking for my breath support. So I'm really making sure I've taken the time to set up my breath properly, taking a really deep breath. And I imagine it, it's coming from a very low place that A, helps me keep, keep, it keeps me grounded and centered, but B, it makes me, it ensures that I'm taking that breath from my lower belly muscles and really feeling engagement and support from there. And um, what I'm doing with my breath, I'm also making sure that my ribs have expanded very important um, with mixed voice and especially with arpeggios as an exercise because that's an, a sustained sound that you're keeping or going through different um, notes for a sustained period of time. You really have to have a good breath set up. And then what I'm looking for in terms of sound is I'm hearing, you know, is that transition a smooth transition or is it a bit clunky? Can I hear that gear change? But it's very hard as a singer, when you're doing it on your own to hear those, if those gear changes are happening, because what you hear in your head is not necessarily what your singing teacher or someone was in the room with you will hear. So I usually record my practice and I'll stop and I'll just listen back to the recording. Sometimes I surprise myself. I'm like, oh, what I heard in my head didn't come through in the recording. Or sometimes I'm like, oh, that's probably need to work on a little bit more. You can really hear that break in my voice. Um, so yeah, using a recording device to listen back on terms of the quality of the sound. And if I feel like the sound wasn't what I wanted or it wasn't enough mix or it wasn't a smooth transition, I work back on it. So I check my breathing. because Usually it comes back down to that, that that wasn't set up properly. And B, I use sort of a visual representation of keeping the sound forward. That's not really a vocal technique as such, but just having that mental... Um, image that I'm keeping the sound forward it's always going forward even if I'm coming down with in pitch the sound just keeps moving forward really helps me make sure that I'm keeping the tone the same across all the different pitches. Rennie you mentioned using arpeggios um, I've got two questions I wonder if you use arpeggios going both downwards and upwards and also if there are other um, exercises that you might use maybe across fifths or maybe um, thirds in it or even um, you know octaves what, what other things do you use yeah so with the arpeggio both going sometimes I just go up sometimes I just do practice them coming down sometimes I do a bit of both so one that I've been loving lately is Sally sells heart-shaped seashells so that's going up and then coming back down. I think I was a little flat there. So, <laughs> um, and then sometimes I just do some that just come straight down from that top note of the arpeggio. Um, it really depends on how my voice is feeling as well that day and what I feel like I can vocally do. Another exercise I do for mixing is just a five note scale going up and down on yeah. Uh, just really helps kind of, again, it's a very forward sound, the nye syllable. And so it helps me keep the sound forward and it really helps me mix um, a very small group of notes together rather than the leaps that are happening with a arpeggio. Yes, I mean, there are lots and lots of um, small exercises you can do, big exercises that you can do. Um, but I think one of the things that you mentioned there was really getting your breath support ready and, and being observant of what's going on there. Um, do you want to just talk a little bit more about that, Rena? Yeah, so yeah, sorry, with, with the, the, the breathing, um, what I'm looking for is I will, so obviously taking the deep breath and imagining it's, I mentioned that I imagine it coming from a low place because it centers me and it helps prepare me, but it like, so it's more of a psychological thing, I guess that I do, but it also helps me to really ensure that these lower belly muscles are getting engaged. Um, the other thing I'm looking for is that rib expansion. 
Uh, so if I can feel that my ribs have come out and stayed there, then I'm like, okay, I've taken a good breath. Um, <laughs> and then as I'm actually doing the exercise, I'm just sort of, there's a lot going on when you're singing, I guess. Um, but what I'm looking for is that I haven't let too much air out at the beginning. And I've really mapped out the um, pace at which I want the breath flow to come out. Uh, while I do any exercise it's not just mixed voice exercises but um, yeah that's what I'm looking for. There's some really good tips there Rena but I wanted to go to you've been working on a number of songs lately and most of them in fact all of them do need a little bit of mixed voice in them maybe some of them needed more head head voice quality so and and less of the chest voice quality but also the reverse where they needed a little bit more blending of that fuller uh textured quality that you get in the lower parts of your voice and blending that with the upper parts so I wondering if you could talk about one or two of those songs Rena and tell us a little bit about what what went on for you in those songs, what you worked on and what you discovered? So the first song that I used a lot of mixing in was uh, Pretty Funny. A lot, it's, a, it's by Pasek and Paul, and I guess a lot of female mezzo-soprano singers would know that contemporary musical theatre, you need a lot of mix. Um, and there were two ways I used mixing in that song. The first one was the song has a big range. It really started at the bottom of my range in my uh, chest voice, but it also forced me to go quite high into my head voice. So I was using my mixed voice to make sure that those transitions between my chest and my head voice were smooth. And it also allowed me to jump between the notes um, without you hearing that crack or that gear change that can sometimes happen. That was the first way I used mixed voice in that song was to get through all those parts of my range with ease. Uh, the second one um, was I had quite a big note towards three quarters of the way through the song. And that note was a sustained note. So breathing also came into, into play. And it was about, it was a D sharp, I'm pretty sure. And it was meant to be quite poignant. Um, but I obviously can't sing that note in my chest voice. It just would have been too heavy and I would have been straining my voice. But I also didn't want to sing it in a light sort of fluffy head voice sound. I wanted to have a bit of power to it. So I really worked on trying to blend. Maybe I probably had 60% chest, 40% head voice. I really like using percentages or like ratios when I'm trying to map out how much I want to mix. And so the reason I did that for that note was to give it that power that my chest voice can have without straining my voice um, and feeling, making the sound scrapey or tense um, mm. to, to an audience. So, yeah. and, and you bring up a very good point there about the poignancy of that song and the emotional content, that uh, the, the, the emotional feel that you need for that song. It's a grim song um, and yet... Uh, and there's nobody around uh, for the singer to um, interact with. It's very much her own thoughts, her own feelings, um, born out of the experience that she's had. So what difference does that make when a song has um, different emotional requirements? Does that also mean you want to work on a, a bit of mixed voice as well? Yeah, definitely. I think whether you're doing a musical theatre piece, whether you're doing a pop piece, whether you're doing a worship piece or a jazz piece, you really need to look at the emotional arc or what the song is trying to convey, uh, is trying to convey, sorry. And then you can use those different, obviously your chest voice has certain tonal qualities. Your mixed voice will have certain tonal qualities and then your head voice will have its own sort of um, qualities. So you can then really play around with those different tones um, and you can choose what is more appropriate for that song, whether it's mixed voice. Um, I'm not saying all sort of gritty, dark songs need mixed voice, but you really got to play into the emotional or the emotion mm. that song is trying to portray and make the best um, vocal decision based on that. Well, conversely, Rena, you also um, worked on a song that wasn't um, a grim song that had a, a lot of joy in it. Um, although it is, it references the black history of America, um, and it's more in the jazz, um, 
genre. So can you tell us about about that one, please? Yeah, so I did Birth of the, the Birth of the Blues. Um, obviously, and also genre also plays a big role as to what choice you're going to make in terms of singing in your chest, your mix, or your head of voice, if it's for the purpose of um, the tone. But with Birth of the Blues, obviously it was a jazzy piece. Um, so it do, it's not really appropriate to be singing in a head voice for it. Um, but I did have a few high notes in that song. Uh, so I wanted to incorporate some mixing because was, there was no way I was going to reach it, singing it in my chest. Um, and it also allowed me to give the song a bit of grit, a bit more passion, a bit of spunk um, when I use my mixed voice for those notes. And I was doing a lot of improvisation. And with my improvisation, I was really trying to access all parts of uh, my range very quickly. So I needed mixed voice to quickly transition between the high parts of my voice and the lower parts of my voice um, and to do that transition quite seamlessly. Um, and again, breathing um, really helped me taking those deep breaths and really mapping out as I'm singing those phrases, how much breath should be coming out and um, yeah, just mapping out the breathing as not just in terms of setup, but in terms of continuing singing that phrase in the tone that I wanted to be singing it in. And some of your improvisation, Rena, was quite extensive in that particular song. Um, again, um, did you work on mapping out how, you know, where you were going in terms of mixed voice and what the breath support was doing? And also it has to fit in with the, the, the um, harmonic structure of the song <laughs> as well. Um, so, so it's quite, quite was an um, experience that one yeah yeah it was there was a, especially the final note there where there was quite a lot of improv I started quite high and then I went quite low and then I went back up high so it was a bit of a vocal roller coaster <laughs> trying to manage everything in terms of the pitching uh, managing it in terms of the accompaniment uh, in terms of blending my different um, voices together and then in terms of breathing. And then on top of that, the character. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, so, Rena, there were quite a few songs that you've been working on. Um, uh, one that required, you know, most of them required that blending or that mixing of, uh, of your registers and and very careful um, mixing what did you um, look at some other singers while you were working on those did you find some singers that you thought oh they really do this um, mixing their registers mixing their voices really well so they get that that um, more grit or that more um, textured quality going up higher um, without it going to a, a, a raw belt um, have you got some examples of singers who you really respect and um, like to listen to with regards to using mixed voice? Yeah, so um, Sarah Borellis, I hope I'm saying her last name right. She has an amazing mixed voice. Obviously, she dabbles in pop music and musical theatre. Um, and it's just so clear in tone. Like you can, you can hear there's such power to the notes that she's singing, but it's not power because she's straining and using her chest voice. It's power because she's been able to manage um, a blend of chest and head voice in a really clean and uh, very precise way. So I listened to her and her song... Um, I think it's called She Used To Be Mine from Waitress. That sort of provided a bit of inspo for singing Pretty Funny in terms of the content and the emotional arc of the song, but also in terms of how to navigate singing in a mixed voice for a song that's quite a psychological contemporary piece. Uh, the other singer that I really admire is Anna Kendrick. So you probably, most people will probably know her from Pitch Perfect. Um, which she, and she also uses mixing in that movie, but she also, she starred in the Into the Woods film version or film, adap film adaptation. And so one of the songs I sang was On the Steps of the Palace. People would think, may, maybe they're thinking that, oh, that song would just be in your head voice, but there's quite a few leaps, interval leaps in that song. So you need to be able to mix. And she does it again, very clean, very precise. The sound is just like crystal clear. Um, so I really admire her, the way she uses her mixed voice. 
Yes. Rene, you've brought out a number of things for, for that are really worth thinking about, the time and the, the slow time that you took to practice, um, really moving through your voice, you know, learning what, what works for you, um, the time that you take and the patience with, you know, noticing your breath support and, um, and really working through that both, you know, in technical exercises as well as songs maybe even using sometimes you may have used some of the songs as an exercise that's always a a useful thing to do is to take that section for example in pretty funny and just make an exercise out of it um so i want to thank you very much rena for um for really you know sharing with us some of your ideas some of the experiences you've had but i just want you to um let us know, Rena. Is there anything else that you want to add to um, to talking about and learning how to use your voice in in um, with those mixed qualities of registers um, that you've you've discovered? Uh, the only thing I want to say is that it takes time to develop a strong mixed voice. It doesn't happen overnight, <laughs> and it certainly won't happen if you're just singing you know, a song that you're working on 20 times through. Um, for so, sure, sure, you can take a piece of it and work on that piece of the song, but you just singing it over and over and over isn't necessarily going to develop the mixed voice that you want. So don't be hard on yourself if it doesn't happen overnight. But really, I know it's boring, but slow practice is the key. Uh, slowly practicing exercises, slowly practicing the phrases in the song and having a clear goal of what you want to be achieving through that slow practice with your practice. Like, don't just do it for the sake of doing it because we're telling you to slow practice those parts. I actually think, okay, well, what exactly is my aim right now with this slow practice? Like if you use an arpeggio, okay, is my aim to have a good breath flow set up so that I can mix effectively? Or am I going to be listening out to those middle few notes in that arpeggio to hear what's happening there? Have a clear goal. And um, yeah, so it doesn't happen overnight. So keep practicing, practice slowly and have a clear goal of what you're trying to achieve. Look, they're great tips, Rena. They really are. I can't thank you enough for for sharing those with us. So we're going to um, conclude our time together and um, and just give you a, a very big thanks, uh, Rena. And uh, I look forward to hearing more from your singing voice and more of your thoughts on singing. So thanks, Rena. Thanks for having me.